out of here. Let's go inside and check it out. Uh oh. I locked myself out. You know what? That's actually a very common thing that happens here in any apartment community is a lockout of an apartment. And residents need to know that we do charge if they call us during office hours to come let them in. But if it's an after hour issue, then they will have to call a locksmith, unfortunately. So it's something to keep in mind. So be sure to keep your keys with you at all times. And if your keys are lost or stolen, report it to the front office. Keys that are lost, we give 24 hours for you to find them before we change the locks. If a key is stolen, we come out and change it for you immediately. And yes, the resident does have to pay for the rekey and or the lock replacement on top of that. Okay, so let's go inside and check it out. What's inside this closet? Well, we really can't tell you because it's a secret, but actually I'll tell you. It's your AC filter and your evaporative cooler for your AC, your water heater and your water meter. So that's why we keep this locked. And a lot of residents ask me, well, when do you guys replace the AC filter? Because we do that for you free of charge. We actually do it twice a year seasonally, once in the fall, once in the spring, or upon request of the resident. And if you Come here, camera. You come over and take a look. We got some stuff hiding in here. This is something, this is one reason why we lock our closets too, is it's not a storage area. So what you're seeing here is not allowed because it locks essential equipment. It can also damage things. We have a PVC pipe in here that can actually break if something hits it, and that would flood out your apartment, so we don't want that. Anyway, as you can see, here's your water heater and your AC filters behind all this stuff. So I'm gonna remove it real quick just to show you where it's at, okay. And as you can see, it has a pleated type, which we do use at times, but we actually use what's called a, a pass-through filter, which is basically just fiberglass. It's better for the system because these systems operate on airflow. If you buy a filter that's, um, let's say, uh, blocks 1,800 microns of filtration, it's going to cause the evaporator coil in there to freeze up and cause the AC to break down. This is one reason why we don't let residents change the filters because if you do and put one in there that's not rated for it, you can actually damage or destroy the unit. And of course the resident's liable for repairs, very expensive. So leave that to us. We'll come out here, check it for you and we'll replace it as needed. Okay. Another thing I'm asking our residents is what about the refrigerator water filter? As you can see on the panel here, this is only for the side-by-side -side refrigerators. There's a little area here for controls and one of them says filter status and of course this one's off. When it comes time to change your filter, and I'll cover that in a second, this light will flash red. Now, does that mean that my filter needs to replace? Well, that depends. How long have you been with us? If you've been with us for less than six months since we opened, probably not. The reason for that is these filters run on a timer. The timer runs from six months down to zero months, and at zero months, that's when this light comes on and tells you it's time to change the filter. But here's the thing, during that six month period, these refrigerators have sat here not used. No water dispense, no ice made. So therefore the, water, the filter is still in great condition. So we don't need to replace it. But we still need to reset that filter because otherwise that clock is not going to count down again and it won't tell you when it's actually time to replace your filter. So to do that, right below the light here and where it says filter status, you're gonna push and hold for a few seconds and the light is gonna stop and you might even hear a beep and that means that the filter is now reset. It's reset for another six months. Now, if you feel like your filter needs to be changed, and this is how you're gonna be able to tell, is when your water tastes different than it did before. There's a little bit more of contamination or sediment getting into it that's altering the taste. That's the time when you change the filter. It's not a good idea to change the filter when this light comes on because again, it's not time for it. The filter is not full of contaminants. Also, too, if we do replace the filter for you, which we will do, we do charge $50 for the filter, or you can purchase the filter yourselves and we can give you instructions on how to do that. One question I get asked a lot is about this little device here above my head. So what is that? Is that a speaker or something? Well, what that is, that's actually tied into the main hallway corridor fire alarms. When those go off, this is the alarm that goes off inside your apartment to let you know that there's a problem outside. So when this siren goes off, you never want to ignore it. You want to immediately get up and exit the building and go to a safe place. Go. Okay, 
inside your bathroom, either the master bathroom or the guest bathroom, you're going to have what's called a GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupter. And it's this little device right here. It looks like an outlet, but it has two buttons on it. One says reset and one says test. There's also a little green light uh, that's down here that should be glowing green if it's working. If it's off, that means that the um, outlet has tripped, maybe due to a short or some other issue, and it needs to be reset. To reset it, you just actually, I'm gonna trip it here so I can show you. Now it's in the reset mode, the light's off. They just push the reset button in, all the way you hear that click, and now the light comes back on, you're back in business. If it doesn't reset, just like with a breaker, stop what you're doing and contact maintenance so we can come assist you. Another question I get asked a lot about is, what does the two hour handyman service uh, actually mean what do I get for that and basically what it is is that we do anything that's not part of the normal apartment maintenance such as hanging drapes or hanging pictures on the wall here we also hang TVs but there's a weight limit size limit restriction on that and we do install grab bars as well okay inside your apartment usually located in a bedroom or in the laundry room you will find a breaker panel it's gonna be this gray panel here and to open it, you push forward in the little handle here and pull back, and it opens up. Now, the only reason you would get into this panel is if you trip a breaker. And basically, tripping a breaker means there was an overload and the breaker is now not functioning. It's uh, cut power to whatever it, is it, was, it was supplying. So it's really easy to reset a breaker, but there are some cautions with it, and I'll tell you that in just a second. But usually, what, when you see an active panel, which is actually hot, meaning that it's supplying power to what it's hooked up to, all the breakers will be pointing towards each other. The little uh, switches here, they'll be pointing towards each other. If it's tripped, it'll be slightly off a bit, maybe to the left or to the right, it'll be the left on this one, to the right on this side. To reset them is very easy. All you do is just flip it all the way off and then all the way back on. Now, if you do that and the breaker trips immediately again, stop what you're doing, contact maintenance because there's a problem with a short somewhere in the system. If you keep tripping and resetting the breaker, it might cause what's called a lockdown, which means that the, when you flip it on, the breaker's gonna hold in the lockdown position, allow that short to go through the panel and actually blow it up. And that's something you don't wanna see. I've actually seen it happen, it's not pretty. So remember, if it doesn't reset, call maintenance. Okay. Living in an apartment means eventually you're gonna have a clogged toilet, it happens. So. We do charge to actually come out and unclog the toilet for you because we consider it a resident cause repair. But if you can purchase a durable plunger like the one I have here, it'll save you time and money. And make sure it has a good suction cup end on it. You don't want to get the old style that has just like a half uh, type suction cup. It doesn't work on these new bowls because these new bowls are configured differently. And you want to be able to get it to fit in there so you get good suction. And when you do plunge a toilet, the proper way to do it is when you put it in, make sure that you push down on the plunger. Don't try so much to pull back on it like you're sucking something out. You want to push down on it and force that air and that water down towards the clog to push it through. You don't want that clog to come back at you. You want to push it away from you and just keep doing that and doing that. Check every now and then. You can flush your toilet, make sure that it's working properly. And voila, we've unclogged our toilet. Action. Also, as part of your maintenance package in your apartment, we take care of any burned out light bulbs for you. If they burn out, just let us know. We'll come and replace it, no charge.